Hey there, Ryan Miller here again. Welcome to the next part of the Unity 2D Rig tutorial. Um, this tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up your character for animation and how to actually place animations on your character. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is, since in that last video I was testing out the rig by rotating parts of it, I'm in a, a non-bind pose right now. I'm in a weird pose where his head is tilted up and his arms are kind of bent. So I'm just going to quickly select every single object in him, making sure that I expand everything so I'm not missing stuff like the, the hands that I almost missed just now. Um, and I'm going to change rotations back to zero. You're going to see the character is going to pop back into place. Remember that the primary way we want to animate this character is by rotating joints. Sometimes we'll probably have to get away with moving objects in space, but rotating is always better because it's easy to reset and it looks the most natural. When we're animating our character, we want our animations to go on the character rig object. We don't want our animations to go on the root node. Uh, again, the root node being the top level group of our character. The reason for this is animations, um, especially if we have keyframes that are keyframing the position, rotation, or scale of the entire character group, that's going to override any code that we ought to control the character with. So anything like a rigid body or a player controller that wants but that should affect the movement of the character, won't be able to if there's an animation keyframe being played. Um, that animation will overpower that code or those physics. So for that reason, this character, and I recommend every other character that you make, should be inside a group, and that group node should be something that is just left alone. The other advantage of working this way is if I wanted to set up this character rig so that I can pull another character in, this character rig would have its own animation, so I can just replace this. I can put a new character under this group, get rid of the current character, and everything stays hooked up just fine. So to make this animatable, I'm going to add an animator to the second level object. So this is an object that all the joints and all the objects are still parented underneath, but not the root level character. Um, and watch be careful that I'm adding an animator and not an animation node. Um, animation is the legacy animation system in Unity, which is fine, it just doesn't handle sprite animation. An animator handles sprite animation and our cool animator blend tree that we can use. So I'm going to add an animator and I'm going to then press uh, Window Animation or Control 6 to bring up our animation timeline editor. I'm going to resize my window a little bit just so that I can see both of these at once. So I've got my character rig selected with the animator object, I've got my animation window open, so now I'm just going to click in this empty area here and say create new clip. I'm going to call it cleric idle, replace the one that I already have here. Um, I like to name my animations with my character name first, because once you have a bigger project going and you've got several characters, maybe you've got a cleric, you've got a uh, hunter, you've got a dragon enemy or something. Um, then you don't have five or four or three or a million separate idle animations that are all called idle. By naming it cleric underscore idle, you know that this is an animation for the cleric. Cool. So once I've got this, I'm just about ready to animate. Watch these buttons up here. See how the play, pause, and uh, step forward run frame buttons are kind of a light gray? If I move around in the timeline at all uh, with the object selected and with an animation clip set, you'll see these turn red. Uh, that means I'm in recording mode, so now I am laying down keyframes on this object. If I click any object that is a child of my animation object, it will stay in animation mode because animation applies to everything on or under that animation object I made. If I click something like the camera or the character root node, which is outside of the animator group, you'll see this pops back into regular mode. So I'm not animating, I'm not keyframing anymore. To enter that stage again, I just need to have that animator selected and touch anything in the timeline, and you'll see it's popped right back to that animation mode. So when I start making the animation for this idle pose, I'm going to want to make sure everything is keyframed. If every object doesn't have keyframes on it, then that means the last animation that played will still have control over that object. Also remember that there's the center pivot toggle here you pretty much always want to be on pivot.
Okay, so I've got one set of keyframes here. We can select these keyframes as much as we want and, and edit them and copy and paste and drag them around and all that stuff. If you select the keyframe on the very top level here, see this uh, row that doesn't have any name? That's the top level keyframe, so that represents all the keyframes for this time. So I can hit Control C, Control V, and copy and paste keyframes this way. Um, we want the idle cycle to loop pretty much in every case. So I want to copy and paste my first keyframe to the end so that I get that looping. And then in the middle here, I can make some kind of an actual um, movement take place. One of the hardest things that you'll you'll find when you're trying to animate a character in this fashion, since there is no inverse kinematics, there's no IK controls, you are going to have a harder time keying the legs to make them stay grounded when they bend. Um, just take your time. It's not impossible, it's just a little bit annoying. we go, that's a decent enough idle cycle. If I want to create another animation, all I have to do is create a new clip, and then we'll make another one. So it clears everything out of here, and then we can go and start keying things again. Once you've finished setting up your animations, you can jump over to Window Animator. And inside the animator, you'll have all the animations that you need to set up. Then you can set up your blend tree. We'll cover the animator in the next video.